your proud, happy faces for me. Thank you so <laughs> much. I love you guys. Thanks for being here. Hello to you, world out there, friends who are watching, who are joining us uh, from Glasgow. We've eaten and we've drank um, some non-alcoholic fizz, because this is a Church of Scotland building. But we are having a nice party time, and I hope you've got your celebratory cake or cup of tea. As my editor, Fiona Rackstraw, said, she would be drinking a cup of tea watching this from Malta High Fee. And thank you for your fabulous editing. And all of my amazing friends around the world, those I know and those I don't know, thank you for joining this landmark night of a book that is finally in print thank you so much for just making the effort to join us tonight or catch up later and this is the book seeing beyond seeing is apparently believing seeing is apparently believing and look at all these amazing things that the team have done amazing thank you guys I love it um I have lots of people to thank. It's not Oscars night, but I do, <laughs> and I haven't got my Pulitzer Prize yet. But I would love to just thank, first of all, my amazing family. Alistair, Sophie, Thomas. Thomas couldn't be here tonight, unfortunately. He's digging a ditch in a field somewhere. Lord, strengthen him, our son. And mum, who's here, thank you for coming, mum. And Auntie Brenda, my best favorite auntie, come up from England. These guys are amazing and cheer me on. And literally every word and every chapter was cheered when I came down to dinner. I finished a chapter, yay, mom, well done. So thank you, family, for supporting me. Um, to Power Church and Power Hour and David and Emma Stark, thank you so much for supporting me, championing me, cheering me on, encouraging me in all the years that has got us to this point. Um, and all the Power Church family, and the uh, and power hour watchers who just have been I've been really like emotional reading all the posts oh thank you Sarah Jane for writing your book and really encouraging me I just want to appre appreciate all of you because it's not unnoticed and actually when you do something like this you're putting your life out there you're putting your inner world out there so I really appreciate all of your uh, support um, and thank you for that and I've already thanked the GPA team offline, but I thank them, amazing volunteers, amazing staff, amazing prayer department, Margaret Janami and Joanna Matruzzi for organizing the event and all the amazing tech team, thanks for your help. That's my Oscar over my speech. So before I invite um, Emma Stark and Larry Sparks, I didn't say, Larry, thank you for coming. I didn't say that live online. Larry Sparks is the publisher at Destiny Image and he's the one that invited me to write the book so thank you and it's amazing and an honor for you to be here tonight after your planes trains and automobiles to get you here so three cheers for Larry <laughs> we love you Larry so before I invite Emma and Larry up to interrogate no interview and, and share um, about the book and interview me a little bit. I would like to read a little bit from the book. Some of you who've read it, who started reading it already? Oh, you have. Oh, yeah, I gave you one. Read it all, of course. You had. You had to. You've done an endorsement. You've read a little bit. Is it worth reading? Those who are reading it. Yes. Excellent. Stay tuned, people. Um, thank you for Jane Hammond and Emma for writing the forwards and all those wonderful hours and hours of editing and, and reading backwards and forwards, as I said, from Fiona. It's one of those um, labors of love. And for those who've written a book, which obviously, Emma, you have, it's such a, a grace and a joy and a privilege to be able to take time to actually write things that are your inner world stuff and you're reading things that happened to me that I've not shared with anybody before some of the things in the book and some I have and so please you know use them as your entrance use them as your doorway to things of the spirit and for those that know me my heart really is for you to know God more I would love all of you out there to know God more and to really just accept him as your Lord and Savior if you haven't get baptized by water and the Holy Spirit, very important, <laughs> and move into a dynamic reality with the Spirit of God and meet Jesus for yourself. Because seeing is really believing and interacting in the Spirit is where we are. And we are in the era of not just this being an optional thing anymore. Seeing in the Spirit, engaging in the Spirit is not an option, family. 
It is a necessity. We are moving into an era of uh, spirit wars where we have to not only engage from the earth, but we must engage from the spirit realm into the realms of the spirit and into the earth to actually affect kingdom of God change. So it's so important that we understand this and see it as an entry level book, not a this is an end point. This is a launch point. So I encourage you to see it as that. And please take it as a pioneering call because surely the pioneering call, we've been prophesying about this all week, is upon the church. It's upon us. Pioneering in the spirit is what I love to do. Going where no man, her woman has gone before. And actually, I was so overjoyed because I love a sign. This morning when I woke up and I was looking at my news feed, and there was this story about free diving. And free diving is when the divers take breaths, they learn how to breathe, and they train themselves into going to depths that no man or woman has gone before. And apparently, the world's best free diver is now gone off my screen. Come back. (laughs) I want to get his name right and give him the credit. Um, Alexei Molkanov is the most um, daring free diver of history going to like 43 stories of a building deep with his oxygen in his body with no help other than a monofin. But get this, guys, especially the the young ones who we've been praying in Generation C, and we've been launching them forward and ekbalowing them into the future. His mother was the best free diver. Uh huh. Go beyond, Sophie. This is your legacy. It's all of your legacies. It's all of your legacies to go beyond where the pioneers have gone. And I, you know, I don't say that lightly because I do believe that the Lord wants to take us into a deep journey of free diving in the spirit that's available to each one of us. And I would say to you, come on behind me and go ahead of me and go ahead of some of these experiences and go beyond in the spirit. And what I loved about this story of Alex, um, Alexi was that he gets himself into a very still, quiet state. And somewhere in the book, it's about silencing yourself, it's about quieting yourself to engage with Jesus Christ, to engage with Holy Spirit, and to be able to move with him in the depths of the Spirit. And that's exactly what the free divers do. They take breaths, they fill their lungs with oxygen, and then they go deep. And there is this sense of actually going beyond depths that no human has gone before is the pioneer's call. That's our call. And so I would say to us all, let's take that call. Now, what I love about it, I'm not, Alistair, Sophie, Mom, I'm not planning on disappearing in the spirit anytime soon. But what I loved about the mother of Alexi was that she just one day was on a dive in 2015 and she didn't come back. And she dove and she didn't come back. And I would love to be able to say, you know, I'm diving in the spirit. And if I don't come back, you know where I've gone because I'm with the Lord on the other side. And then it might be that I come back because there is spirit travel, but we'll not talk about that just now. It's all in the book. You can read it. So let's say that there is an adventure waiting for each one of us, and it's through the door in the gateway of Jesus Christ. So please go through the door. I'm going to read from chapter one. Seeing is believing. Jesus Christ had been my savior for around 10 years, and I was lying on the floor of a church building during worship time, overwhelmed with emotion. As the music continued to play, I was overcome, both with my love for Jesus and the tangible presence of God. I remember I was crying, and not pretty tears, but snotty, wet face, messy tears. And I was embarrassed at the outburst of my emotion to such a degree that I had covered my face with my arm, and yet I couldn't stop. (laughs) I'm getting emotional even reading it, for goodness sake. (laughs) 
I see when you when you remember your encounters with Jesus, it just takes you right back. My thoughts were on the theme of, I know you love me, Jesus, but I want more. I love you, Jesus, but I want to love you more. And it was burning inside me, a provocation to more hunger, more burning adoration. And in a single moment, I saw Jesus. He was right there, and I saw him with my eyes open. He was not in solid form, even though he looked like a man. His form was more like light with hologram or projection kind of effect. And nevertheless, he was present in that moment, and I saw him. His eyes were filled with light and adoration. And I heard his voice, and I experienced his presence tangibly, as if he was in the room with me like you are now. It was an otherworldly encounter, but it was not ethereal to the point of being unreachable. This was really happening, and Jesus was really there. He sat in front of me. With his face coming closer to mine, he reached over and kissed me on the cheek. I felt the determined touch. I was still on the floor in more puddles of tears as I experienced the overwhelming adoration and passion of Jesus for me flooding through my body. I can still feel where he kissed me on my face as I write this today. I heard him say, let me hold you now. He lay next to me, putting his arm under my head. He pulled me to him and just held me. It seemed the longest time passed, but it was probably only minutes. I wept as his profound, tangible love filled me like waves over and over again. I had known his love before, but not like this. This was deep, and it transcended everything else that had come before. This was burning adoration from Jesus to me and back again. There was no question about his love for me. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is more delightful than wine. Song of Songs 1-2. It was not a vision. It was not a dream. I was fully alert and awake, and I could see Jesus and sense that Jesus was really present in that moment. I was encountering him in the convergence of the unseen spirit realm and in the seen realm where I physically was. I was transformed in that moment and never the same again. The reality of Christ's devotion settled on me in that moment. He loved me and I loved him and it was settled. This place of reality where what is hidden in the spirit realm breaks through into the natural earthly realm we inhabit is something that I now experience daily, seeing, hearing, feeling with all the natural senses in their spiritual mode. This experience can be yours too, and all of yours too. It is not age dependent, it is not stage dependent. I'm adding this, this isn't in the book. It's not age dependent or stage dependent. It's very much available to each one of us who are hidden in Christ. Spirit realm reality is more real than our day-to-day -day lives, more alive and impactful. The coexistence of life and experience is beyond the boundaries of the known world. It is not found in exploration of new geographical territories or through gaining more knowledge with developing thought. This amazing new world of discovery is found right in front of us. It's right beside us if we can but see it. So stretch out your hand, family. Focus your eyes and see. The invitation is open and access is available to you. Experience the unseen realm with me. This concealed realm is of the spirit, unseen and yet accessible with ease <laughs> as we focus on it and focus on its king, Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, darling. <laughs> I think that's enough. I think you can read it for yourselves and enjoy that as an introduction. I write as I talk, and so just go with the voice of the Lord and the voice of SJ, and let it take you to the places that the Lord has prepared for you. There is room in the Spirit for all of us to engage with Him, Holy Spirit. And if it's new for you, welcome. If it's something that you've experienced before, time and again, there is so much more. There is so much more. 
So be encouraged. And if you need encouragement, I'm here to encourage you beyond the book. And we will invite Emma and Larry up now to speak however they would like to speak. Welcome, Emma and Larry. And thank you for being here. We are so proud of you. And we know what it's like. We know what it's like as authors. It's like a whole giving birth. Yeah. Well, we, yeah. You, you, yeah, you don't know what that's like. Your wife, Mercedes, does. But you know what it's like to birth a book. <laughs> not a book, not a baby. We are so proud of you. And uh, just a couple of thoughts come to mind. I remember the first time I met you, we had just started as it was Glasgow Prophetic Centre. We were four weeks in and uh, we met each other. It would have been probably April or, or March uh, uh, 2009. And uh, we've kind of been a bit joined at the hip since 2009 and and Sarah Jane has been one of God's just absolute greatest gifts to me and what an amazing joy to run together as mums as friends as workmates as travel companions and all the things that we get to do uh, our lives together and we 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 have this poem that we we quote back and forth to each other uh, when I am old now we're, we're decades off it, aren't we we're decades off it but we do when I I am old, some of you will know it, um, it's not a, a biblical poem, I should just say this. Uh, when I am old, uh, I shall um, spend my pension on a pound of sausages and wear a purple floppy hat and uh, learn to spit and do all the kind of things that I can't do in the sobriety of my youth. But maybe I should start to be, the poem ends, some of you will know it, maybe I should start to be a little bit extreme now so people People don't get too shocked when I am old. And so we have quoted this back and forth. I know it was a favorite poem of my mum's as well. And we have said, one day when we're old and very gray, we will swing on an old gate somewhere and we will recount the tales when we're eating sausages uh, with our pension and purple floppy hats. And uh, so we hold that. But what I love is the journey that we've had, the journey that we'll go on where Sarah Jane has always been the wild extreme one. And, uh, and actually, she makes me look quite tame. And uh, Sarah Jane has always been that one who is hungry for more. And she models that. And so those of you who are watching online, and I know there are thousands of you who love what we do and have loved and fallen in love with Sarah Jane as we have as a family, what you will get when you open this book is an, not just the words on the page, but you will get an impartation of her hunger. And I actually think mon you can't put a price on that, on an impartation of hunger. And she will, Holy Ghost, irritate you into, because that's her specialist skill. She, no, in the best way, from in the best way, she will, Holy Ghost, irritate you uh, out of any comfort zone you are in and you guys know online I want you to be high-fiving in the comments because you know uh, you need a Holy Ghost irritant in your life and let that be Sarah Jane Biggert so uh, yeah, uh, yeah happy to be irritating ha yes it is it is it is utterly With the brilliant. extreme things of God and, and one story I remember we'd maybe known each other maybe eight or nine weeks and you turned up one day at one of the schools we were running and you started to roar. And I'm holding the microphone thinking, Jesus, this better be in scripture. And uh, you were doing this wild thing around. I'm thinking, oh, Jesus, help. And I remember um, ringing two of the senior prophets in the nation, uh, Stephen and Angela Bowler, and saying, I need to meet you. I've got this volunteer on my team who started roaring. What are we going to do? I need advice. And they laughed at me, and they opened the scriptures, and they said, this woman is a gift of God and um, because what she is doing is an anointed roar like Joshua gave that, that broke the walls of Jericho down and uh, I have found her to be biblically 
on it and understanding how to apply what we've read as story in Scripture into our reality. And we are, this community is forever indebted to, uh, because actually, yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Um, because David and I get to do what we do because she uh, provokes as, as a gift of God. Larry, thank you for coming from Dallas. Yeah. Oh, hello, hello. Uh, yeah, yes. it's a joy. T talk to us, because oh. I'm just about to write a, an endorsement of your next book, Pentecostal Fire, yeah. but you've published a number. Yes. So what would you like to say about this? Well, the Lord gave me three things while I was sitting there specifically about you, about this book. Number one, and you just ended with the word provoked. I believe God is raising up people right now who are provocational voices, who actually make complacency impossible. And I actually believe there's a grace on this book. And maybe after I share my few things, I actually feel like we're supposed to pray for this book because Destiny Image exists not just to give people information. I always want to be theologically on the up and up, but I can't help but think of the book God Chasers. I don't know if any of you remember that one, Tommy Tenney, back in the day, where people would read that and they would have encounters with God. I believe that same grace is on this book where people are going to read that, even as you were sharing your testimony, that story that you read. I don't know how many of you felt it, but that word provocational came to me. It provoked me to be hungry. I believe as people read that, they're going to they're going to stop. You want that. They're going to stop reading and say, God, I want what I'm reading about. I feel that on that. So number one, it's provocational. Number two, I, really, I, I believe the essential in all of this is what you said, and you do a wonderful job articulating it, the doorway of Jesus. Because I love the supernatural, and I believe, and you've been pr praying and prophesying into this, we must restore the wildness of the Holy Spirit. He is not tame. We need the, that's why I'm writing my book, The Wildness of Pentecost. We need it. However, I think we always will remain safe when the door is emphasized exclusively as Jesus. Because if we try to get into the spirit realm through any other door, that's where it becomes, as you find people would say, dodgy. Yeah. I don't use that over in Dallas, but I like that word a lot, actually. <laughs> so the door of Jesus. And the third thing I want to say, and then I, I, I do, I really want to pray over the book, is uh, this is an essential contribution to the body of work on the seer anointing because there's not many books on the seer anointing i could name them you had james gall who really broke it open with the seer you had my friend anna werner who's in her 30s my my age who it's very it's very practical and accessible and then jennifer leclerc who did the seer dimensions but you don't have a lot of works on the seer anointing this is biblically based this is practical but it's heavy in the spirit this is, this is weighty in the spirit. I'm not saying that the other works are not. They're all different. This has a weight on it. It has a, provo it has a provocational anointing, and I believe it's going to point people to the door of Jesus, and it's going to give permission for people to explore. Yeah. Wow, I feel the Holy Spirit on that. It's going to give people permission to explore in the spirit. So can we do that? Can you just stretch your hands? I know this seems a little bit strange, but that's all right. It's, it's legal for us to be a little strange here. I want to hold this up almost as a kind of a point of contact. Yeah. yeah. Father, we thank you. Even right now, in Jesus' name, as people are reading this, I pray literally, what I see in the Spirit is people opening up and reading certain portions and being taken into encounters with God. Yeah. So, Father, we pray for that. We pray for that impartation on this book. Come on. We pray, Holy Spirit, that as people read these words, their hearts would burn. Their hearts would burn. They'd fall on their faces. They'd fall on their knees and say, God, I know there has to be more. The Bible says it's legal. And I read this lady's Amen. testimonies. And if God can do it for Sarah Jane, he can do it for me. Come on. So, Father, we do. I pray in the name of Jesus that as we start seeing Amazon reviews and you get testimonies about this book, I pray and I'm expecting measurable encounters with God where people were saying, listen, I didn't even know I could see in the spirit until reading this had an impartation and opened up my spiritual eyes. In Jesus' name, amen, wow. amen.
I believe it. Well, I wholeheartedly. So those of you who are watching right now, don't click away from this, but open another link in your browsers uh, on your device that you're watching. And the team are putting links up now that you can click through to our shop. If you get it from our shop, you have signed it. May your arm be healed from a thousand signatures. But but the one the difference between the Amazon copies uh, and the ones that, that are in our shop our Sarah Jane has signed them. And I know you guys uh, love signed copies. So uh, make sure that you jump straight onto our website, propheticscots.com, and you get yourself the signed copy. Do not miss. There's something about being uh, in the first fruits, isn't there, of grabbing a fresh revelation. And of course, what we're prophesying is the age of the Holy Spirit, the era of the Holy Spirit. And we're coming into that. I have to say, Sarah Jane, um, uh, literally about three or four days ago, uh, as we were zigzagging around America, I came into a new seer dimension. And you know, I, we, we've seen for years, uh, but I think you're in a new seer dimension in the last, uh, what, six months. I'm in a new seer dimension, and we are literally talking to our husbands uh, and our nearest and dearest and saying, who? you know because the realms are open the realms are open and I don't even know we'll, you know usually we keep these things quite quiet because uh, it just seemed appropriate but I think these are the days where we're going to share some extreme things as signposts of what is actually possible so I'm going to get you to hold this microphone because we just got a, a bunch of flowers as a, as a yeah. Thanks. Just because it's good to celebrate after the yuckiness of COVID, isn't it lovely just to have something that brings a smile to our faces? Yes. 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 So, <laughs> yes. 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 Congratulations. Congratulations, Sarah Jane. <laughs> Congratulations. Over to over to you, Sir, over to you, Sarah Jane. Thank you, thank you. Actually, there's going to be loads more books come from this house. We were actually talking about it. I, yeah, I, I yeah. actually believe that there is a writing grace on this place because yeah. we, we don't need more people who just sit down and say, "I'm going to write a book because I want to be famous." I want to write. I mean, obviously, we know you, you you don't like make millions of dollars and go live on an island somewhere. Okay. That's just not what happens. No. But you no. write books no. to release impartation, and you only steward what you've carried well. And you guys have carried that prophetic anointing, the seer anointing, very well, very maturely, and I see that only multiplying here. Can, and actually, for those online, uh, listen to this wild story. I was in Dallas with the prophets. This is a story about the value of books. Mm. And one of the more established prophets um, who actually has a house um, in the Seattle area, uh, you know, I mean, in, 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 in Washington State, and she invites the prophets to write in her house. Uh, there's an anointing for writing in her home. And she she said this, God has told her repetitively that in the coming persecution, which unfortunately we're all prophesying about, uh, that is where there is agreement, uh, and whenever uh, broadcasting gets taken down, and whenever there's problems with social media, and that ease of access of the, the current word of the Lord, uh, she felt that the Lord said this to her, and it'd be interesting what Destiny Image think about this uh, as well, that books will become the commodity and people will gather around some key books that are being written right now that you will need to have in your armory and they will read them to each other along with scripture because there will not be anything else to access. Now I had not thought that before but as soon as she started telling me this she's building libraries. Dad feel free to buy more books. She's uh, uh, she's she's building libraries 
libraries for uh, the coming persecution because she wrecked and when she said it I had goosebumps all over my body and I said that has got the Spirit of God all over it so it's not just about you know a momentary pleasure or a momently a momentary open door to a spirit realm there are some resources that I believe Larry at Destiny Image along with Tina Pugh and your other staff there are going to publish that some people in this room and others and this book is one of them that are going to be resources in persecution that you will read and reread when you cannot get your hands on anything else isn't that a joyous prophetic thought <laughs> but uh, uh, we really believe that uh, this is one of those books yeah wow well I'm blown away and thank you so much for your endorsements and for those who have endorsed the book and I think you know as I wrote this book it, the prayer was in fact when I was baptized all those years ago in Taurus Parish Church my dear friends from my original prayer trip right here we love you yes we do and um, Nigel Barge said to me your scripture is blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled that has been a mark on the inside of me I am hungry for more of God. I am hungry to know him more. I am desperate to have the full measure. Are you not? We should all be. That's what it's all about. Now, my manifestation of Holy Spirit in me is not going to be yours. Thank you, Jesus, everybody's saying that my manifestation is not going to be like Sarah Jane's. It's going to be like yours. Whatever it is, it's going to come out in ways from your body and your mouth and your passion that is you. You know, it's you. It's not me. It's you. But let it be that, Holy Spirit, I am hungry. Jesus, I am desperate. Why don't you stand with me and we'll just pray. Yeah. Lord, what you did with me. Lord, I pray you do with everybody watching. I pray you do it with everybody who reads this book, whether it be audio or Kindle or in the flesh. Lord, and even as I prayed, as I wrote it, I pray that there would be doors opening and never satisfied, never be satisfied, always be hungry, always be provoked into a deeper encounter and be a free diver in the spirit of God going where he has made a way for you. So I lose that, uh, if you will, that hunger. And I feel like, I've, I don't think I've ever prayed that before. I lose a hun, um, an impartation of hunger to know God more I, right in your belly, to be hungry for God, to let him get you. And our response is, get me God, make me hungry. You know, I want to encounter you, not just to read about you in scripture, not just to pray dry prayers, but to actually engage with you and to really see you and to really know you and know your ways and the realms of creation whatever that looks like. That's the dangerous bit. If you add that bit on the end, who knows what's going to happen. <laughs> whatever it looks like, God, I am willing. I am willing. Lord, whatever it looks like. And I just say again in front of all these people in my lovely family, I am willing. Amen. Let's give a big amen. Give somebody a hug. Thank you, family, for joining online. We will see you soon. Thank you for joining.